Good day to you, stranger. I'm Goodwife Howard. Welcome to Salem Town. I see you are admiring our local burying ground. It has been here for 55 years, you know, ever since 1637. You seem a bit apprehensive about going in. Is something troubling you? May I help? What's that? The carvings on the stones? Oh, you're not sure what to make of them. Well, they are a vital part of our English tradition here, you see. Perhaps I can assist you. I'll go in with you if you like. Wonderful. Come, let me explain. You see, here in, in this town and here in New England, of course, death is all around us. It is a part of life, as we all know. And these carvings, well, think of them not as something frightening, for they are not meant to, to send one uh, screaming from the burying ground. Rather the opposite, you see, they are meant to draw people in, people just like you, because they are a secret code. Yes, that's right. They are a secret code. Would you, would you like me to show you how to crack that code? Wonderful. We'll take a look at a few of the stones and I'll help you. And when you see how easy it is, you'll just laugh. <laughs> the carvings help those who will never know these persons. Just like you, visitors to the burying ground, descendants, relatives, and the curious. Well, they help you learn more about this person, as if you were having a conversation. Well, we see uh, some very noted persons resting here, even Mr. Richard Moore and his wife, Christian. Goodman Moore came here on the Mayflower over 70 years ago. Nathaniel Mather, well, he is buried just over there. He's the son of Increase Mather. You don't know that name? Well, mayhap you'd have heard of his brother, Nathaniel's brother, the Reverend Cotton Mather. Ah, yes, I thought you'd heard of him. So now that we are inside the burying ground, let us take a look at a few of these stones. The carved symbols have great meaning to us, you see. They help our dead to tell the world what they believed in when they were among us who and what they loved, and most importantly, to profess their Christian faith. There are three parts to the carvings on these stones. The lunette, that's the top part that resembles a Roman arch. That's right, the half circle at the top. Then there's the finial, the circles on either side, just underneath the lunette. Sometimes they have carvings on them. Sometimes they're plain. And the borders, those are the side panels, sort of the long rectangles on the left and the right side, and sometimes stretching across the bottom. What's that? The skull. Oh, the skull does, oh, does it disturb you? Oh, well, I can clarify that for you. Oh, you mustn't be afraid. It's not to frighten anyone. It reminds us all that we will indeed one day die, but above more than that, it gives us hope of the next life. For instance, the winged skull, that's the most common one you will see here. Well, the winged skull, that represents the flight of the soul to heaven. See, nothing scary. The daisies on this stone, oh, isn't this a lovely stone? Look, it represents the innocence of the child and pays homage to the infant Jesus. The grape leaves on the borders, those represent the Christian faith. So this person has told you quite a bit about themselves, have they not? 
Let us look at another stone. This one has a winged skull too. Do you remember what that means? That's right, the winged skull represents the flight of the soul. Very good, you were paying attention. Most excellent. But it has an hourglass. Have you heard of an hourglass before? It is a way to tell time. The sand drips down through the top to the bottom. Can you guess what that means? Time flies, very good. And the borders on this stone have scrolls. Think of it as a commemoration. That's right, it represents life, particularly life or time unfolding at an uncertain length. Are you ready to look at another one? You're not scared anymore? Oh, I'm so glad. Here, let's look at this one. Now you know that the winged skull is nothing to fear. This one also has three circles in one. That refers to the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Again, this person is telling you they are religious. The grape leaves, aren't they lovely, on either side of the border? Those tell us, again, that this person has a strong faith. What's with all this religion, you ask? Well, indeed, there is a great deal of it here in this community. It is an integral part of our existence, you see. Would you like to look at something else? Now, this one is different. This one has a cherub on it. And that means divine wisdom. So what is this person telling us? Yes, we are and do consider ourselves indeed a learned people here. For we can read. It is the law. There is a school here. People here are wise and favor justice. And that is what this stone is telling you. Well, other people with much more money than persons like myself <laughs> might decide to have a more elaborate grave prepared with lots of words carved on the top to describe all of their noble deeds in life. This one looks a bit like a table, doesn't it? Well, the person isn't actually inside. It, it's Governor Bradstreet the husband of the poet Anne Bradstreet. Have you read her poems? Oh, they're wonderful. Oh, you must look at them. While Governor Bradstreet had his accomplishments carved onto the top of this stone. Can you make them out? You're surprised to know that a lot of us can read. Oh, well, I'm happy to inform you, as I said, that it is the law. Well, I'm looking at the angle of the sun, and it is telling me that I must get back home. The milk in my dairy will not become cheese on its own, and I must get back to work. But I hope I've been able to help you with some of the fears or questions you may have had about the carvings in our burying ground. So the next time you are in an old burying ground like this one, you know that there is nothing to be frightened of, that these carvings are just a secret code, and now you know what to look for. I thank you for exploring with me, and I hope to see you again sometime in Salem Town. Good day to you, and God grant you good health.